My name is Jennifer, and today I'm going to make a Monterey Jack cheese. Monterey Jack originated in Monterey County, California about 130 years ago. It's a sweet, mild cheese. It's pretty versatile. It can be made with either whole milk or partially skimmed milk. It can be aged for one month, or you can go four months and longer. It is a mesophilic cheese, so the highest it gets is 100 degrees. It is stirred a lot while you're heating it for that half hour. Then you hold it at that temperature, and you stir it for another half hour. Then you take out half the whey, and you stir it for another half hour so the curds get fairly small and then the salt is added to the curds before pressing. This is my clabber culture. Every morning I put a little bit of clabber that is just set up into a new jar, add milk, and I just keep it going that way. For today's recipe I need about one and three quarter cup of clabber. It's a quarter cup per gallon of milk and I have approximately seven gallons of milk. If you don't have clabber to use as a mesophilic culture, you can also use Floridanica, MA11, and other basic ones like that. Also, buttermilk. Now you give it a little stir just to scoop up the big chunks at the bottom that didn't get cut. So here's the curds all cut up. It's sunk down to the bottom a little bit. And yeah, they're pretty chopped up. It will heat up slowly. I'm not too concerned about them heating too quickly. So I'm just gonna turn this on low heat and set the timer for 30 minutes and go to 100 degrees. Just to quick check this, look at the curds. They're pretty soft. These are not done because they're too fat inside and they're too soft. Yeah, I can taste them at their wet. So I'm gonna stir for another 30 minutes. And I am feeling like this is probably good enough. Like the wet, uh, jello y feeling is pretty much gone, and most of the pieces are feeling a little bit more firm, a little drier on the outside, but I don't want them to get too dry. A dry cheese is just not that great. Here's the curds. They're all pretty nice. The squeeze. I don't feel them splooshing in my hand, and they have knit together pretty well, and then you want to just crumble them up, and they fall right back apart. That means that they are done. These will continue to cook. That's part of the reason why I want to continue on to the next step, because I don't want to just overdo it. I feel like these are dry enough. They don't feel dry dry, but the pieces are quite small. They're quite dense. They're quite boingy. There's not much moisture coming out of them. They're sticking together well, crumbling well. That to me is done. So I'm going to call it quits right here because I can. Slowly. It's falling, Nicholas. It's falling forward. Watch. Stop. The recipe for Monterey Jack calls for about half the amount of salt, one tablespoon per two gallons of milk. I still stick with my higher level of salt because too little salt can make it taste bitter. I've never had a bitter cheese, but I just don't want to go there. And because I like salt and I think it makes it taste better. This curd did not look like much a few minutes ago and now it looks like I have so much here. These big lumps are fine. I don't have to break them all up. The salt will work through them as the cheese is being pressed. Taste your curd, and it should taste noticeably salty. If it doesn't taste salty, you know you need more. This curd is very, very delicious to eat just plain. I am going to have a salad for my lunch today, so I'm taking some and setting it aside. You could also add cream to this and kind of make a creamy cottage cheese of sorts. I don't think I'm going to have too much curd today, but I would actually need these collars, but I'm going to do it anyway just because it's always easier in the case that I do. I wet my cheesecloth with some warm water. Yeah, I'm already up above. Take a 
see like a curd is down to that part. So I'm gonna take these out. Then I open this back up so that I can adjust the curd, more or less. It doesn't have to be perfect yet because that will get better as I flip it. And then I always try to get it down inside this lip. And this is supposed to be kind of at low medium pressure for 12 hours. It's right around noon. I am going to keep it kind of at medium pressure for about 18 hours. I will not be getting up at midnight to get this out. And this is all you do. It's a pretty simple cheese. I totally forgot to film last night. I flipped it before bed. We had company over and I forgot that I was supposed to be filming. But it was just a solid cheese, well knitted. So this is much longer than it was supposed to be left in the press, but I decided I don't care. We're gonna try the Monterey Jack today. I'm excited. So I have two Monterey Jacks. I never told you this. Well, maybe I did. But I made one a couple weeks before I made the one that I filmed. I made them exactly the same as far as I'm aware. These are both over three months old, made with Culture. So we're gonna open both of them today and see what they taste like. This is the first one. So here we go. They look pretty much identical. I mean, look at that. The color is the same. The height is pretty much the same. The first one is maybe a wee bit bigger. It looks a little cheesy in the bag. You can see that like when a baby's born, it's covered in cheesy goop. Doesn't smell that weird or anything. Looks pretty good. Just blot it with a paper towel to get a little bit of the moisture off. It actually feels pretty dry to me. Just touching it because it's so hard. It almost has like a, huh, it doesn't feel elastic at all. I recently opened a pepper jack and it just had a gritty, grainy texture to it. And so I'm concerned that this is gonna be the same way. It almost feels like a cheddar. Yeah, it's just really dry. Hmm. I mean, it's creamy. It's soft. It definitely is not under salted. I don't know why they say to only add four tablespoons when I did six and a half. Why is that? Interesting. And this one is the other one made a couple weeks earlier. There's a little bit of whey in the bag. Normally when there's a little bit of whey in the bag, I tend to think, oh, that means it wasn't cooked enough and or pressed enough. But this was cooked plenty and it was pressed for 18 hours. So why is there still whey coming out? That's what I'm not quite sure about. Smells pretty much identical and it looks very similar and it feels very similar has that dry feel and it tastes similar. I mean, five stars to myself for getting two consistent cheeses. This one might be a little bit creamier. These are fine. They're kind of like a cheddar, but they're not as sharp as a cheddar. The one we filmed is a little bit drier. They're both about the same. Maybe I just like the elastic texture a little bit better than I do a drier cheese, but I really liked my Darby cheese that was a cheddar. This just feels a little bit almost aerated. Why is that? I don't know. It's mild. It's a very good flavor. It's just that the texture is a little bit aerated, like not as compact and smooth as I want it to be. What the hey? So when a cheese is dry, you just say it's a dry aged cheese. And then people are like, oh, cool. It's fancy. It's just wrong. <laughs> I'll package these up now, cut these into sections. We'll eat them. They'll be excellent in mac and cheese. They'll melt up great. Speaking of, I want to melt one and see how it does. Let's melt some. Oh, that fat coming out. It melts very nicely. This is totally fine in cheese. It's just not as creamy as I was hoping it would be. You just let it go a little longer, it gets toasty. I hope you all know that the best way to make grilled cheese is spreading the outside of the bread with mayonnaise instead of butter much better try it also you can mix in grated cheese to that mayonnaise if you want that to give it a cheesy crunchy crust on the outside of the grilled cheese 
crunchy, crispy bits. It's good cheese. Not exactly what I was wanting. Not sure why. Sorry, I'm not more helpful, but it still tastes good. It's like candy. Good grief. That's ridiculous. It's almost like a curfilly. I just did a little research about uh, hard cheeses that are too dry or crumbly, which is what this one is. And it says that it was possibly cooked too high or for too long. And I'm like, okay, people, then what's the point of saying that you have to cook it for that long at that temperature, which is what I did. If you're new to cheese making, this is one of the most important things to get into your head. This stuff is by feel. It is not by formula. And I've been doing this for almost two years. I still struggle with how to go by feel. In the video, my reaction that this was done was correct and it was probably done earlier. The other thing I read is that more salt can be added, which I know. And that's why I add more salt because you don't want to get a bitter cheese and because you want to get all the way out, but maybe it needed even more. But so the, why did the recipe say half the amount of salt? Things like this just do not make sense unless there are typos in the book. A drier, crumblier, hard cheese is more of an irritation than an actual problem. It's just not exactly what I was wanting to go for. Nope, didn't quite seal. I'm gonna try it one more time. Let's see if we can do this again. Yep, right here is where it did not seal the first time. And then I sealed it again. As you could see when I was sealing this, some of the whey was coming, which makes me think that this cheese was not cooked enough and that it actually needed to be cooked more in order to get all the way out. Or maybe it was cooked too much and pressed too hard. I don't know. I hope this isn't discouraging for all y'all because you're like, oh, Jennifer's supposed to know what she's doing and she's clueless. Why am I making recipes and things that she posts and why am I even following the videos? Which is a valid point. Go find somebody else to follow. I have no idea what I'm doing.